beloved brothers and sisters. If you've been on this path for a while, and all of you have, you already know the truth. You know that you are God, an expression of God on this planet, that you are pure love and joy and happiness and wisdom and strength and creativity. That's who you are. And you know this. And yet, from day to day, from moment to moment, you may not have that experience. You might know that you're still the little happy baby that you were when you were two or three, getting a big kick out of life. And yet for the most part, you walk around like an old person under the weight of the world, beleaguered by situations and circumstances mm -hmm. and a body that's getting older. Mm -hmm. And that might be your experience. And the two things coexist, or so it seems. How can it be that I am the living Christ? And yet I walk around a little bit depressed. How could that be? Well, there's only one thing that's true, and that's love. There's only one thing that's true, and that's who you really are. The trick is, how do you experience that? Well, meditation definitely helps. It helps to be still. It helps to get below the surface of all of your thoughts and reconnect with who you really are. But there's more that you can do. One thing you can do is to start look, looking with interest and curiosity at the structure that has you imprisoned in a less than loving experience. There is a structure that holds this in place. It is the structure of the ego. It's based on some very universal beliefs that are shared by everyone. You're all alone, something's wrong. No one really understands you, you don't really belong. And those beliefs live under the surface of your experience. They're holding that depression in place. They're holding your stress in place. And one of the things you can do other than meditate and other than be out in nature and be grateful, all those things are wonderful. But if you're feeling less than great yourself, be honest with yourself. If you're really feeling like, Ugh, then take a look at the structure that's holding that depression or that pessimism in place. And what you'll find is, it's ridiculous. It's just beliefs that you're holding on to. And they're less than loving beliefs. And the answer is, start to challenge them. Start to ask yourself how you feel when you think those thoughts. Because it's not the thoughts that are holding you in a place that's less than loving of yourself. It's your belief in the thoughts. It's your willingness to accept that they are true and there's nothing you can do about it. So let's say you wake up as this one does in the morning and you notice that you're wrist still hurts from where you fell weeks ago. Well, that 
that might be true. It doesn't hurt all the time, but it's still sore. That in and of itself is not enough to make you unhappy. But if you believe that your wrist isn't getting any better and you're just gonna have to put up with this and that's part of getting old, start to notice how that thought makes you feel. It's not the wrist, it's not the sore arm, it's not any of your symptoms that are making you feel less than joyous. It's the belief in what that means. Holding on to your beliefs that are less than loving is what is keeping you trapped. And you can't just say, oh, none of that is true because I'm really just God. That won't help. That's just putting icing over something that's really not edible. What will help is for you to challenge, really challenge some of the thoughts that you hold on to. They really aren't true, but you'll never know this if you don't challenge them. What if the reverse is true? What if your sore wrist just is something that's asking for love? And it's an opportunity for you to bring compassion and love to yourself. What if it's just an opportunity for you to ask the angel of your body, the angel of that arm, to come and help you and relieve you of that? What if that's the greatest gift that you could ever have is a sore wrist? so that you can challenge the thought that you're falling apart or you're getting older or life is hard and then you die. Once you challenge these thoughts, they fall apart. They just break apart and they don't release you. I mean, they don't hold you anymore. And what's underneath is what you've always wanted. It's the little three-year-old kid who's happy and excited about life. So let yourself be suspicious, not of the thoughts, but your belief in the thoughts, your willingness to accept their truth. They aren't true, but you won't know that if you don't challenge them. And when you do and they fall apart, the blessed good news is that you are love underneath of there. You are excitement and happiness and joy. And you're not imprisoned at all. But you hold the key. You can ask for help. You can let yourself out of prison. Whenever you want. It's very, very close. You're right at the door. I love you and I'll speak with you again soon.